It would all start with a shot, then a glass, then it'll grow into a bottle, then two bottles. A lot of our favorite classic Hollywood stars had some vices that they were hiding from the cameras. The most dangerous was alcohol. Bottle by bottle, some of these stars were drowning in misery and addiction, but none of their fans had any idea. In this list, you'd be exposed to some of the Hollywood stars who fell victim to the tyranny of alcohol, who they were beforehand, and how they tried to navigate the hardships until their untimely demise. Jack Kerouac in the heart of Lowell, Massachusetts, where the city's pulse beat with the rhythm of industry, a literary maestro named Jack Kerouac emerged into the world on March 12, 1922. From these modest beginnings, he later grew to become a voice destined to echo throughout the world. Growing up in a simple mill town, Kerouac's early years were marked by the hum of looms and the simplicity of immigrant life. However, as a wanderer at heart, his restless spirit found solace in the written word. He was a gifted writer with an insatiable curiosity, so he would write about topics and happenings in society, from life to drugs, and even the harsh reality of poverty. His words painted vivid portraits of a generation questioning societal norms, and his unique writing style became a beacon for those seeking a different path. However, hidden beneath the weave, his brilliance was a shadow that would ultimately dim the glow of his literary legacy. Kerouac's gift came intertwined with a severe drinking problem, a relentless companion that dogged his footsteps through the alleys of inspiration and the valleys of despair. His alcohol intake was excessive, but he used it as a coping mechanism to navigate the intricacies of Hollywood. Soon enough, fate had a horrible plan for him. One fateful evening, Kerouac's world took a harrowing turn. First, it started as a wave of nausea. The room spun, and the air grew thick with the weight of impending tragedy. He began vomiting blood, and everyone around him knew that whatever was going on was horrible. And so there was a desperate dash to the hospital, but sadly it became the last desperate act in the life of the great Jack Kerouac. Sadly, on October 21st, 1969, the final chapter in Kerouac's tumultuous narrative unfolded. A hemorrhage, the cruel consequence of cirrhosis, claimed the writer's life at the tender age of 47. Billie Holiday in the vibrant city of Baltimore, on April 7, 1915, Eleonora Fagan was born. Destined for greatness, she would later become renowned as Billie Holiday, an enduring luminary within the realm of jazz, though inexorably tethered to the shadows of personal turmoil. Billie's formative years unfolded against a backdrop of adversity, navigating poverty and confronting the harsh realities of racial segregation. In the evocative ambiance of Baltimore's jazz establishments, she discovered her prodigious gift, a voice destined to redefine the very essence of jazz. The trajectory of Billie's ascent from the streets of Baltimore to international acclaim attested to her unparalleled musical prowess. Her voice, an instrument resonating with raw emotion, traversed a spectrum from heart-rending blues to invigorating swing. Her ability to imbue each note with a soul-stirring depth that transcended conventional genre boundaries captivated the world. However, beneath the mellifluous strains of her music loomed the specter of personal struggles. Billie Holiday, the esteemed Lady Day of Jazz, grappled persistently with substance addiction. The insidious influence of heroin and alcohol threatened to eclipse the brilliance of her artistic endeavors, casting a pall over her life. In the waning phase of her illustrious career, the toll exacted by a life lived on the precipice of self-destructive tendencies became increasingly conspicuous. The evocative notes that had once flowed effortlessly from her vocal cords now mirrored the challenges etched upon her countenance. Repeated arrests on drug-related charges rendered Billy a tragic symbol of the perils associated with both fame and the relentless pursuit of escapism. July 17, 1959, marked the denouement of Billie Holiday's tumultuous odyssey. A constellation of health issues, exacerbated by prolonged substance abuse, culminated in her premature demise at the age of 44. The world mourned the loss of one of its most iconic voices. Hank Williams 
In the rustic town of Mount Olive, Alabama, on September 17, 1923, a musical prodigy named Hiram King, Hank Williams, came into the world. He would become a very strong figure as far as country music was concerned. His impact in the entertainment industry would ring through the halls of Hollywood and his voice and soulful compositions left a mark on the genre. Williams's early years were imbued with the strains of Southern life, but despite his environment, he harnessed the heartache and joy of his surroundings, transmuting them into the timeless narratives that would define country music for generations to come. The trajectory of Hank's musical journey saw him rise from local radio shows to the grand stages of the Grand Ole Opry. His compositions, marked by an authenticity that resonated with the everyday struggles of common folk, elevated him to the status of a revered troubadour. With hits like Love Sick Blues and I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry, Hank Williams etched his name into the annals of country music history. Yet beneath the luminescence of his musical success lurked the shadows of personal challenges. Hank Williams, the country music luminary, grappled with the tumultuous currents of addiction. His reliance on alcohol and prescription drugs became a persistent undercurrent, complicating his meteoric rise and contributing to a life marked by peaks and valleys. Tragically, the final verse of Hank Williams' life unfolded on January 1, 1953. A journey that began in the heart of Alabama met its untimely end in the backseat of a Cadillac en route to a concert in Canton, Ohio. The cause, acute heart failure compounded by a lethal cocktail of prescription drugs, bore the tragic imprints of a life teetering on the precipice of self-destruction. At the tender age of 29, Hank Williams left a void in country music that time has yet to fill. His contributions, however, endure as an enduring testament to the transformative power of authentic storytelling through music. The lonesome whine of his steel guitar may have faded away, but the resonating impact of Hank Williams' legacy continues to echo through the vast landscapes of country music, an eternal tribute to the troubadour who sang from the heart for the world to connect to. John Bonham born as John Henry Bonham on May 31, 1948, was an iconic English musician renowned as the drumming powerhouse behind the legendary rock band Led Zeppelin. Celebrated for his unparalleled speed, potent drumming power, rapid single-footed kick drum technique, distinctive sonic imprint, and an innate feel for groove, Bonham stands as a pinnacle figure among the greatest and most influential drummers in the annals of music history, Dorothy Dandridge. Born on November 9, 1922 in Cleveland, Ohio, carved her place in Hollywood history as the first African-American woman to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actress. Despite her groundbreaking achievements, her life was marked by personal and professional challenges that eventually contributed to her tragic demise at the age of 42 in 1965. Dorothy Dandridge's career trajectory was notable for its highs and lows. In the 1940s and 1950s, she found success in films such as Carmen Jones in 1954, which earned her the aforementioned Oscar nomination. Dandridge's talent and beauty made her a trailblazer in an industry that was often reluctant to acknowledge the contributions of African-American performers. However, despite her success, she faced racial discrimination, limited opportunities, and the challenges of navigating Hollywood's segregated landscape. Behind the scenes, Dandridge grappled with personal demons, including issues related to alcohol. The pressures of fame, coupled with the racial prejudices of the time, took a toll on her mental and emotional well-being. Her marriage to Harold Nicholas, one half of the renowned Nicholas Brothers dance duo, ended in divorce in 1951. The subsequent financial strain and custody battles over her daughter, Harolyn, intensified the challenges she faced. The 1950s witnessed a decline in Dandridge's career, attributed in part to the limited roles available for African-American actresses during that era. Facing financial difficulties and emotional turmoil, Dandridge sought solace in alcohol, contributing to a downward spiral in her personal life. By the early 1960s, Dorothy Dandridge faced a series of setbacks, both professionally and personally. She struggled to secure meaningful roles in an industry still grappling with racial biases. Financial hardships mounted, and her battle with alcohol intensified. 
Tragically, on September 8, 1965, Dandridge was found dead in her West Hollywood apartment. Her demise was officially ruled as an accidental overdose, with barbiturates identified as the cause. While alcoholism was not the sole factor contributing to her demise, it was one element in a complex web of challenges that included racial prejudice, financial strain, and mental health struggles. Thomas Ince born on November 6, 1882 in Newport, Rhode Island, was a cinematic pioneer whose impact on the early days of Hollywood's silent era was indelible. As a film producer, director, and innovator, Ince played a crucial role in shaping the trajectory of the burgeoning film industry. Ince's career soared during a time of rapid growth and experimentation in the film world. He co-founded Inceville, the first major studio in Culver City, and became known for implementing production techniques that laid the groundwork for modern filmmaking. Ince's keen business acumen and artistic contributions established him as a key figure in the evolution of Hollywood. Tragically, Thomas Ince's life was abruptly cut short at the age of 44 in 1924, shrouded in mysterious circumstances that would fuel enduring speculation. Officially attributed to heart failure, the circumstances surrounding his demise sparked rumors and controversy. Some theories suggested that alcohol might have played a role, adding a layer of intrigue to the narrative. The lack of clarity surrounding Ince's passing only deepened the mystery. Some accounts even proposed alternative scenarios, including rumors of foul play and elaborate cover-ups. The ambiguous nature of the situation allowed speculation to flourish, and questions lingered over whether there was more to Ince's demise than initially met the eye. The connection between Ince's lifestyle, health, and ultimate demise became a subject of fascination and debate. The allure of Hollywood's golden age often comes intertwined with tales of enigma and scandal, and Thomas Ince's untimely demise became a chapter in this complex narrative. As the film industry continued to evolve, the legend of Thomas Ince endured, not only for his contributions to cinema, but also for the mysterious circumstances that surrounded his departure from that stage of life. Dana Plato Born on November 7, 1964 in Maywood, California, rose to prominence as a child actress in the late 1970s on the popular television sitcom Different Strokes. However, despite the early success and recognition, Plato's life would ultimately take a tragic turn, marked by a tumultuous adulthood married by substance abuse and, notably, issues with alcohol. As a young actress, Plato portrayed the character Kimberly Drummond, the adoptive daughter of the wealthy character Mr. Drummond, on different strokes. The show's popularity thrust her into the limelight, but the pressures of fame combined with personal struggles foreshadowed the difficulties that lay ahead. Plato's transition from child star to adulthood proved challenging, and she faced the inevitable pitfalls that have befallen many young actors navigating the precarious terrain of Hollywood's expectations. Subsequently, she grappled with various personal and professional setbacks that contributed to a decline in her career. Notably, substance abuse, including alcohol, emerged as a formidable challenge in Dana Plato's life. The coping mechanisms she employed to navigate the complexities of fame and personal issues ultimately became destructive forces. The impact of addiction was evident in her struggles to sustain a stable and healthy life, Tragically, on May 8, 1999, at the age of 34, Dana Plato's life was cut short by a drug overdose and excessive alcohol. The circumstances surrounding her death underscored the devastating consequences of addiction, and the untimely loss served as a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities that accompany a life spent in the public eye. Jean Seberg Born on November 13, 1938, Jean Seberg was an American actress celebrated for her captivating performances in films such as Breathless and Bonjour Tristesse. 
Despite her cinematic success, Seberg's life unfolded against a backdrop of profound personal challenges, including relentless battles with mental health issues and the ravages of alcoholism. Seberg's entree into the film industry marked a meteoric rise, with her portrayal of the free-spirited Patricia in Breathless, solidifying her status as an icon of the French New Wave. However, the pressures of fame, coupled with personal struggles, cast a long shadow over her burgeoning career. As Seberg navigated the complexities of Hollywood, the tumult within her personal life became increasingly pronounced. Mental health challenges weighed heavily on her, and the coping mechanisms she sought included a descent into the throes of alcoholism. The solace she may have sought in the dazzling lights of fame was overshadowed by the inner turmoil that plagued her. On August 30, 1979, at the age of 40, Jean Seberg's journey tragically came to an end. While officially ruled as self-inflicted, her struggles with substance abuse, particularly alcohol, were acknowledged as contributing factors to her untimely demise. The narrative of her life, once adorned with the glimmer of cinematic brilliance, became a poignant tale of the fragility that often accompanies the veneer of fame. Jean Seberg's legacy endures not only for her contributions to film, but also as a symbol of the struggles faced by those navigating the demanding landscape of celebrity. Her story serves as a stark reminder of the impact of mental health challenges and addiction on even the most talented and acclaimed individuals in the world of cinema, underscoring the complex intersection of personal battles and public personas. Montgomery Clift Born on October 17, 1920, was heralded as a gifted actor known for his compelling and intense performances. Behind the captivating facade of Hollywood's leading man, Clift wrestled with personal demons, contending with profound struggles that extended into the realms of alcohol and substance abuse. The nuanced depth of Clift's acting set him apart, earning him acclaim for roles in films such as A Place in the Sun and From Here to Eternity. However, the shadows of his challenges loomed large, and the pressures of stardom exacerbated an ongoing battle with alcoholism. As Clift navigated the demanding landscape of Hollywood, the weight of his internal struggles manifested in a tumultuous relationship with substances. Alcohol, in particular, became a companion on his tumultuous journey, contributing to the erosion of his well-being. On July 23, 1966, at the age of 45, Montgomery Clift's life was cut short. While his demise was not solely attributed to alcohol, it undeniably played a role in the overall decline that marked his later years. The complexity of Cliff's narrative lies not only in the brilliance he brought to the silver screen, but also in the shadows that obscured his personal life, emphasizing the intricate interplay between talent, fame, and the profound toll of addiction. Montgomery Cliff's legacy serves as a poignant exploration of the fragility that can accompany artistic brilliance. His story illuminates the challenges faced by those navigating the often unforgiving terrain of Hollywood, a tale of triumph and tragedy that transcends the boundaries of the roles he so memorably portrayed. John Garfield Born on March 4, 1913, Garfield faced not only the pressures of the demanding film industry, but also the tumultuous political climate of the McCarthy era. Amid his thriving career, Garfield encountered personal challenges that extended beyond the silver screen. The political climate of the time cast a shadow over the entertainment industry, and Garfield found himself ensnared in the web of McCarthyism. Accused of having leftist affiliations, he became one of the many artists blacklisted during this dark period in American history. The strain of political scrutiny, coupled with the inherent stresses of a high-profile career, took a toll on Garfield's well-being. His struggles with alcohol, used as a coping mechanism for the mounting pressures, contributed to his declining health. The convergence of personal and professional turmoil became a crucible, testing the fortitude of a man who had once illuminated the screen with his charisma. Tragically, on May 21, 1952, at the age of 39, John Garfield's journey was cut short.
The cause of death was a heart attack, a poignant manifestation of the toll exacted by the weight of external pressures and internal battles. The classic Hollywood era lost not only a remarkable actor, but also a figure whose life embodied the complexities of navigating fame, politics, and personal struggles during a tumultuous period in American history. Bix Beiderbecke Born on March 10, 1903 in Davenport, Iowa, was a jazz cornetist whose musical genius left an indelible mark on the jazz landscape of the 1920s. His career was nothing short of meteoric, characterized by brilliance, innovation, and a unique approach to jazz improvisation that set him apart from his contemporaries. Beiderbecke's musical journey unfolded during the Roaring Twenties, a period marked by cultural dynamism and the flourishing of jazz. As a cornet player, he showcased an exceptional talent for improvisation and an innate ability to infuse his music with emotion and innovation. His contributions to the Chicago jazz scene, particularly with the Wolverines and Gene Goldkett's orchestra, solidified his reputation as one of the era's most influential musicians. However, amidst the symphony of success, Bix Beiderbecke battled personal demons, chief among them being alcoholism. The vibrant jazz age, with its allure and excesses, took a toll on Beiderbecke's health. His struggle with alcohol became increasingly pronounced, affecting both his personal life and professional engagements. Tragically, on August 6, 1931, at the young age of 28, Bix Beiderbecke's life was cut short. Complications related to his ongoing battle with alcoholism contributed to his untimely demise. The jazz world mourned the loss of a virtuoso whose innovative spirit and lyrical brilliance had the potential to reshape the trajectory of jazz music. Bix Baderbeck's legacy extends beyond the brevity of his years. Despite his short life, his influence on jazz remains profound. His innovative approach to improvisation and his unique sound continues to inspire musicians, making him a revered figure in the history of American music. The tragic intertwining of brilliance and personal struggle in Beiderbecke's story serves as a poignant reminder of the complexities that often accompany artistic genius. If you enjoyed this video, you'd love the riveting Adrian Barbeau facts that we have compiled for you. Check it out here.